Um, truly, it's, it's, it's an important issue. It's a silent, it's a silent monster. And as Representative Fasano and others have said earlier, and you'll hear it over and over and over, it crawls and it lurks and it creeps and it affects people where they are most vulnerable. And it's in their hopes, their aspirations, and their dreams. You know, we, we hear a lot about it, and you know, people call it cyberbullying, and, and, and rightfully so. I don't even think that does it justice because it's more than bullying. Bullying to me when I was a kid was a kid that's getting picked on in a lunchroom or a bus and they tell their dad and the two dads, the dad walks over to the other dad and says, hey, we have a problem. Usually it gets resolved. This goes beyond that. It's stalking, it's harassment, and it's life threatening. You know, my first exposure really came to this, came about a year and a half ago. We, we have a friend in my family that it was really my wife's family that we vacation with every year. We go up to Maine for about a week and a half on the 4th of July. And I've seen this little little kid. His name was Lennon. His mom loved John Lennon. Don't hold me to them. They're not good Republicans. They're Democrats. But they loved John Lennon, and they were fun-loving people. And, uh, and Lennon, his name was Lennon Baldwin, and Lennon and I were on a cornhole toss team every year, and we ruled. We dominated. We beat everyone. And we had little tournaments, we had trophies that him and I, we, we developed a relationship over the years every summer. And then I got a phone call. I got a phone call. He hung himself. Well, how did he hung himself? He went into his bedroom one night. No one knew about it. I saw him a month earlier. Why did he do it? Why did he do it? For, for months, months on end, he was being stalked on the internet. They were calling him names. They were calling him all sorts of things, telling him that if he would say anything to anyone, they wouldn't kill him. They would kill his parents. They would kill his little brother. See, what happened to Lynn, the tragedy was, wasn't that he killed himself, which it was, is that it started earlier than that. See, Lynn got started to mess up with some minor crime, started smoking pot and doing other things. And the people that he was buying his drugs from knew, had him hooked, and had him, had him against the barrel. He tried to stop. And they kept stalking him, and stalking him, and stalking him. And he couldn't get away. He couldn't hide. He even went to the police. He went to his school first. And his school, and I'll, I'll defend them. You know, it gets me angry, but I'll defend them. They couldn't do anything because it wasn't happening at school. It was happening off school off campus. Many of the kids weren't even going to the school that he was going to. They went to the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office in New Jersey, Morristown, New Jersey. No crime was being committed yet. So they couldn't do anything. But they stalked him to the point where he took his own life. This monster's out there. The monster's out there. And the reason why I tell this story is because it robbed him of something before he killed himself. It robbed him of hope. It robbed him of his future. It robbed him of what he was destined to do in his life. And he lost track of his destiny. You know, and what I want to say here today is it's very simple. It's very simple. The monster on the internet doesn't start all at once. It creeps in slowly. And it robs you of hope. It robs you of your destiny. And I was always taught a little story when I was, when I was younger, a, a, a phrase from my dad. He says, if you don't fill yourself up with something, someone else will fill it up for you. And what happened with Lennon, and there's no perfect scenario. He was a good kid. But he began to lose sight of what his destiny was. He began to lose sight of what his hope was. And soon, he was left in complete darkness. And his parents, good parents, never saw it coming. Friends never saw it coming. You know, Representative Senator Fasano said it best, we try in Tallahassee, but laws are laws are laws. And we will do our best to enforce them and to create penalties. But there's no penalty that can stop that monster. It has to, it has to start at home. And it doesn't matter how perfect your home is, because it still can find a way in. It still can find a way in. Because we carry it with us everywhere we go, our cell phones. You know, as Senator Fasano said it, said it earlier, it comes with you everywhere. 
that cyber stalking, it goes. You know, and, and I, I have an 18 year old daughter and I joke with her a little bit and say, no one puts anything bad about themselves on the internet or on Facebook. <laughs> if you would read your friend's Facebook pages, it sounds like they're millionaires right off of Hollywood and everybody loves them and they're driving a Porsche and they're dating the rock star. No one talks about the hidden depression that they're going through. No one talks about their fears. No one exposes their vulnerability on the internet. But the monster sees it and goes after it. I'll leave you with this one little story that I was told to remind any of you and of maybe some of that I remind myself of. It's a story of pre-revolutionary Russia. And the priest was going into Russia and he got to this guard post. And when he got to this guard post, the guard stopped the priest and says, looked at him. And the priest looked up and the, the guard says, I have questions for you. And the priest goes, okay. He goes, I have three questions. Who are you? Where are you going? And what are you gonna do when you get there? And the priest, kind of with a sheepish smile, looked up and looked at the guard and said, can I ask you a question, sir? And the priest said, or the guard said, yes. He says, every time I see you, every time I see you, can you ask me those same three questions? Who am I? Where am I going? And what am I gonna do when I get there? And why do I say this story? Because it's not just about being taunted on the internet. It's about knowing who you are and knowing where you're going and what you're gonna do when you get there. And every young person has dreams until someone tries to snuff it out. And it's our jobs to always be vigilant, to look out and remind them who they are and what they're doing and what they're gonna do when they get there. Thank you for having me and I'm honored to be a part of it and do what I can in partnership with Representative Fasano to fight for this and to kill this monster uh, that's stalking our kids.